members. The next item in the order of paper is a motion to affirm a statutory rule. I'll ask the clerk to read the motion. That the Motor Vehicles Wearing of Seatbelts Amendment Regulations Northern Ireland 2020 be affirmed. And I call the Minister for Infrastructure to formally move the motion. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, I beg to move. Uh, the regulation... Or, order. Sorry. Just, uh, just to give guidance to members before we start the debate. The Business Committee has agreed that there would be no time limit for this, on this debate. And now I call the Minister to formally uh, open the debate on the motion. Minister. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, the regulation before us today will provide a new exemption from seatbelt wearing laws for ambulance personnel when they are providing urgent treatment to patients in the rear of the ambulance. It is made under Article 23 of the Road Traffic Northern Ireland Order 1995. Under current law, all adults are required to wear a seatbelt when fitted, with some exceptions. While one of those exceptions relates to the emergency services, it does not extend to cover ambulance personnel. As such, ambulance personnel could be prosecuted for removing their seatbelt to care for a patient whilst riding in the rear of an ambulance. At present, the current operational practice is for everyone in an ambulance to wear a seatbelt, unless to do so would impair the treatment of a patient. The proposed change will support current operational practice and ensure that healthcare professionals riding in motor ambulances can carry out their duties properly without infringing seatbelt legislation. It will also ensure parity between ambulance, police and fire professionals when performing duties required of an emergency service. The new regulations specifically state that seat belts should only be removed when a person is providing treatment which cannot be delayed, either due to the nature of the treatment involved or because of the medical situation of the individual being treated. I would expect ambulance personnel to use their discretion when determining what treatment cannot be delayed in any given case. The legislation does not specify which persons are covered by the exemption. This should ensure that any person who is providing urgent treatment to a patient whilst travelling in an ambulance would be able to rely on this exemption. I would anticipate that this would be primarily paramedics, emergency medical technicians and other ambulance personnel, but it could also be other medical personnel such as doctors and nurses. While not explicit, it is not anticipated that such an extent exemption should extend to the drivers of the ambulance. The regulations also revoke a statutory rule similar to the one before you today that was made in 2016 but could not be affirmed due to the suspension of the Assembly in January 2017. As technically the 2016 rule remains on the statute book, it is necessary to ensure that it is revoked to remove any ambiguity around the proper operational date of the exemption being granted. In concluding, Mr Deputy Speaker, I want to take this opportunity to place on the record my gratitude and appreciation for all of those working in our ambulance service and across our emergency services for the invaluable work that they do every day, but particularly the work that they have done to keep us all safe during the COVID crisis. Mr Deputy Speaker, I commend the motion to the Assembly and ask that it affirm the regulations. And I call the Chairperson of the Committee for Infrastructure, Michelle McLevine. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and I welcome the opportunity to speak as Chair of the Committee for Infrastructure on the statutory rule. The Committee initially considered the proposal for this rule at its meeting on the 29th of April this year and welcomed its introduction by the Department. The rule itself was then approved by the Committee on the 3rd of June. While its consideration and approval was relatively quick and simple, this was the culmination of a far longer process, as this legislation has been a considerable time in the making. It was initially intended that the regulations would become operational in March 2017, following a consultation in 2016. However, the regulations were not debated or affirmed as a consequence of the suspension of the Assembly in January 2017. And it is only now, after that hiatus, that this can be addressed. The rule itself amends the 1993 Motor Vehicles Wearing of Seatbelts Regulation in Northern Ireland, 
It creates an exemption for ambulance personnel from the requirement to wear a seatbelt when providing emergency treatment to patients in ambulances. The requirement for compulsory use of seatbelts in vehicles comes from Council Directive 91671 EEC. This is reflected in the 1993 Northern Ireland regulations whereby all adults are required to wear a seatbelt where fitted. The 93 regulations do provide for some exemptions, one of which does relate to the emergency services, but this does not extend to ambulance personnel. This effectively means that the ambulance personnel could be prosecuted for removing their seatbelt to care for a patient whilst riding in the rear of an ambulance. The statutory rule provides an exemption from this requirement and there, therefore gives much needed clarity to the ambulance service as well as removing the potential threat of prosecution or fixed penalty under the 1993 regulations. The rule also ensures parity between the position of ambulance professionals and other emergency services such as the police and fire professionals when performing the duties required of an emergency service. Therefore, having considered its detail and purpose, the Committee for Infrastructure is content, content with the rule. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I call Cahill Poylan. Uh, uh, Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Um, our ambulance workers provide a critical role on a daily basis by transporting those who are unwell. A lot of the these times are in emergency situations. The last thing our ambulance personnel needs to worry about when they are performing their essential duties is that they are at risk of prosecution instead of concentrating on their patients' immediate care. This change will provide clarity for the ambulance service and remove potential threat of prosecution. And this amendment and motion is to be welcomed. And I just I'd, I'd sought further clarity in relation to the consultation uh, through the, the departmental officials and the minister in relation to no road safety issues in terms of the personnel or the patient itself. And the, I'm content that we got that clarity. So. I'm content, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, to support the amendment on this motion. Goramil Magat. I now invite the Minister for Infrastructure, Ms. Uh, Nicola Mallon, to conclude and wind up the debate on the motion. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I want to thank the Chair of the Committee uh, and all members for their support uh, in taking this forward and also for their contributions today. Uh, as both the Chair and uh, Cahill Boylan have pointed out, uh, this does address uh, an anomaly that um, it was, we weren't able to address due to the collapse uh, of the Assembly, but it is an important step forward in removing the risk of prosecution, but also bringing much needed clarity uh, to our ambulance personnel as they carry out their daily duties and making sure that we are all safe uh, and in saving lives. Um, so in concluding, uh, I would like to thank uh, the I would like to ask the Assembly to affirm the regulations before us today. Members, the question is that the motor vehicles wearing of seat belts amendment regulations Northern Ireland 2020 be affirmed. All those in favour say aye. Contrary, no. The eyes have it. The eyes have it. I could ask members to take their ease for a few moments.